last not the least uh, underwater wireless communication system and um, it's, a, it's a quite innovative project and would be presented by Chad and Hilio. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Julio Proano, Chad with Nyang. Uh, for this part of the project, we're going to be just two people, myself and Chad. For an overall project, we're going to have four people as the as the full as the full members of the full, uh, of the project. Our project is called underwater underwater wireless communication via particular system, uh, velocity channel. Sorry, man. Um, this project relies a new technology, a new technology for for underwater communications being developed by among other uh, Dr. Ali Adi at NJI team. Over 75% of the air um, is covered with water. There are numerous applications that pose an increasing demands on high speed in, in underwater wireless telemetry and data transmission, such as autonomous underwater vehicles, hardware security system, and underwater surveillance. Oh. The current scenario they are um, current underwater. Um, Current underwater communications is based, is based on the propagation of pressure sound waves as, um, through the medium, which is water. And the scalar measure of the pressure, of the pressure, okay, okay. Current underwater technology is based on the propagation of acoustic waves and the scalar measure, measurements of the, prop, of the pressure. As you can see over here in this graph, uh, we are relaying in those in, in those tip, in those two points over here. This one is a transducer which converts the electrical impulse into a pressure impulse. We also re, uh, re receive at the same time um, in, in the receiver the, the pressure impulse and then convert it to an electrical impulse. The new technology relies in a vector sensor. The vector sensor, what the vector sensor does is read two more, two more inputs. How it does it? It receives the, the wavelength pressure. In addition to read the pressure sender, it also reads the particular, the, the, the Y and T component of the particular velocity. How it does it? Over here is the transceiver. No, over here is, is the transmitter. You send, you send the, the signal. The signal is with the pressure. Uh, in this part over here, we have the P component and the C component of the, of the, of the velocity of the velocity vectors. Basically, what, this, what the vector sensor does is, is going to reduce uh, the size of a transceivers. Before, we needed one receiver and one transmitter. If we wanted to send 10,000 signals at the same time, we needed 10,000 Receiver and transceivers, and, and and transmitter. But when the vector velocity, when the vector sensors, we're going to reduce by at least thirty percent the amount of of the the size of the whole transceiver. But also, in addition to size, we're going to increment the the speed in which the data is, is collected. As you can see over here, before we just read one, if you send one, one, one signal, you get one. But before, but now, you're going to receive three. Only over there, we're, we're going to increase by 200% the normal rate, um, the normal rate of, uh, reception. Our main objective is to create, uh, 
to the to the side and develop a system for underwater communications that that relies in vector in, 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 uh, that relies in vector sensor technology. Specifically, our final product will be a parallel transceiver. Of power transceiver which rely on vector sensor technology and which can be employed in underwater communications. The prototype we're proposing will be a step forward inside the rev revolution in underwater communication. The specification for this, pro uh, for this product will be the data will be sent and received at a rate of 200 kilobytes per second with a range of over three kilometers of <coughs> kilometers. The transceiver will operate in the 8 to 14 kilohertz frequency band. The device maximum source level will be 175 um, micropascals. We have divided our project in four, in, four, in four phases. Phase one with the, chan the channel modeling and the Monte Carlo simulation. In this phase over here, we will collect all the data which, which, which be applied to our simulations. Based on those simulations, we will try to go to the next step, which will, which will, be, which will be to implement as PSPIs to try to simulate on the real conditions. The next phase will be the laboratory, the laboratory testing in, in of the hardware. Our final phase will we have the prototype development testing in a facility in there where. There exists no working um, prototype for our underwater communication system relying on vector sensors. Therefore, our, our task will be to apply the result of time for the simulation performance phase one to design a new underwater communication system. A radio development system that relies on pressure sensor will serve as useful starting point for our design. One potential model for a simulation design derived from the previous research on wireless, of wireless, the wireless underwater communications using ultra, ultrasonic transmissions. This system has the advantage of the system will comprise will be consist in two PCs, the the signal, the two D, DSPs, digital uh, signal processing. We will have a serial parallel buffer in addition to the to, to the normal components. Since the only difference between underwater communications um, and and Aerial communication is just the medium. At this point, I would like to hand to my um, to my teammate, Chadwick, and he will be talk about the business plan that we have for this project. Hi, my name is Chad, and um, I'm going to introduce the business plan for ORCA, Ocean Research Communication Advancement. Um, basically, um, what our company's uh, mission statement is, is ORCA is going to be the leading marketer and producer of underwater communication with um, using vector sensing technology. Um, in addition, ORCA is going to be aiming at keeping it environmental friendly. In no way do these, this new technology is going to affect marine life. One focus we're going to do, um, one focus of our company is we're going to focus on superior customer service. Um, let's talk a little bit about my, our product. Our product is going to be an underwater communication transceivers that will receive sig signals um, by, um, data signals by, particle velocity vectors, uh, vectors of, uh, of pressure, which is a scalar. Um, talking about important specifications of our device, our device will be able to um, have a data rate of 10 kilobits. It's going to have a range of 8,000 meters omnidirectional, and it's going to have 
it's going to be 300 millimeters in length, which is a lot smaller than our competitors. Um, it's also going to have a price point of $7,000. Um, what is our edge? Um, we're going to offer a smaller device going at a faster data rate. And since this is a smaller device, it's going to operate at a much lesser power. And um, we're also going to uh, focus on customers. So we're going to offer a, a customer service unlike our competitors. Um, how are we going to offer service? Um, basically, we separated our service into three plans. Um, it's going to be an annual plan. So it's the, we haven't come up with a price point for each individual plan. But the average of the plans is going to be around $1,000, which is roughly 7% of what our device actually costs. Depending on which plan you get, you'll either get next day service, the next five business days, or and 24-7 hours, 24-7 call assistance, and of course, parts and labor. Um, one of the most important things to have a successful business is you have to identify your strength and your weaknesses. So what's the greatest way to do that? A SWOT analysis. Um, the strength of our product or our company is we're offering a superior product. No product on the market today will be able to operate at our um, specifications, our specifications as we stated. Um, we're also going to have a thorough market analysis. That way we have a um, fair understanding of our target markets. Um, we're going to offer a cheaper price than our competitors. Our price point, like I said before, is $7,000. Um, I'm going to go over in a little bit what our competitors are going to be offering. Um, so with the, our strengths it comes along opportunities. Since the market, as of now, has really, um, the current technology really limits to what it can do. Um, with our technology, we will be able to have new applications of it, like real time early warning systems our our increased data rate at a faster rate will be able let's say if we're monitoring environmental changes in the water be able to warn people on the coast on the coast about like earthquakes happening near the shoreline in the shore um, another opportunity is that our market is multi-industry. That means we have more than one industry that we can actually target. Um, it's actually separated into six industries. I'll talk a little more about that later. Um, weaknesses. Um, our weakness, of course, we're a new company. We have no reputation. So in our next three to two, four years, we're going to be trying to develop our reputation. We also lack funding. Obviously, we're, uh, we're going to be appealing to you venture capitalists for funding. If we can't do that, we will have no business at all. Um, we also have to come up with a su successful strategy into entering into our market. If we're unable to penetrate out the target market, we will also as fail as a company. Threats? Threats is going to be um, our product might be re-engineered in the future. Since we're using, we're doing something that no other company, uh, underwater communication company is doing, um, th there is a chance that they're going to imp implement our technologies into their devices. And in that way, we're going to um, have more competition. And um, what are our potential markets? I separated our potential markets into six divisions. Basically, it's the Department of Defense, oceanography first, uh, environmental research and monitoring, um, diving, aquaculture, and oil and gas industries. Um, as you can see by the pie chart, um, the biggest industry would be um, Department of Defense, owning, I mean, the biggest market, I'm sorry. Um, since it's the biggest market, of course you want the biggest pie of, pie, slice of the pie. So we're gonna be targeting the Dep Department of Defense. Why the DOD? Because the DOD is stable. As um, since it's a government-ran company, well, it's government-operated. 
um, as mo maximum stability. That means what's the chance of the DOD failing? It's very little. It has a huge budget. It spends millions and millions of dollars each year on military research. So um, in that way, it's always looking for newer, better technology. If we're willing to offer them a newer, faster way of underwater communication, they'll definitely take up on that. Um, now I'm going to talk a little bit about our competitors. Um, our main competitor in this instance is LinkQuest. It's an underwater acoustic modem company, which um, owns about 95% of acoustic underwater modem market. Um, as you can see, we're going to be offering 10,000 kilobits versus their five kilobits. And just some of the main points is we're going to be offering a longer working range, about 1,000 meters longer. And also, we're going to be, it's going to be in a smaller housing, about, it's going to be 125 compared to 150 millimeters. Um, one of the biggest advantages of our device is also the price point. Their device, which is the UMV 1000, um, is going to be cost roughly around $10,000. We're going to be offering our device for about $7,000. Um, one of the great ways to identify what we need to work on is to have a spider diagram of our competitors versus us. Um, basically, in this spider diagram, our strengths are our product quality is about equivalent. Our services are going to be superior than theirs. The range and the data rates and tech support is also going to be better. Um, one of the things we have to work on that they offer and we don't, um, they have product line versatility. As of our initial entry to market, we're going to be only be offering one prototype. This prototype is, it won't, it won't capture all our customers um, to their specific needs. Um, versus where, where um, LinkQuest is able to offer five different types at five different price points. Performance versus pricing. Th um, this is basically showing that LinkQuest is a really big company versus our new company. And that our new device is going to offer better pricing at higher performances than their device, UMV 1000, at a lower performance and higher pricing. Um, st startup. We're um, basically, this is our startup plan, and it averages about 500,000, including, including in initial research and development for starting. Um, basically, we're counting on also investors, you the VCs, to invest about 280,000 into our, uh, actually 200,000 into our company. Basically, how we're going to do this, we're going to basically give you 20% um, of ownership over our company, and um, actually 20, per yeah, 20%. And um, basically, we're going to give you a return overall in the long run when we um, devise an exit strategy. Um, basically, that, this is just a brief summary of our expenses of access, which we counterset by investment and loans. Um, a SARS forecast. Um, it's very important to see which direction you're heading our, um, in your company. In our first year, we're only going to project to sell 64 units. Um, basically, I projected of the 64 units, about two thirds of the use, um, those customers will buy um, those units sold will buy services, and then as I move along the projection, um, these 42 add up to this, and then two thirds two thirds of those customers um, are going to buy the services. So in the long run, we're really promoting our services to be a major profit bringer. Um, a major, brings in a major profit for our company. Um, the first two years, we actually calculated the growth rate to be at 10%. But between the second to the third year, we actually have a growth rate of 40%. This is due to the developed reputation we will have by from the second to the third year. Um, it's very important to recognize your cash flow. Of course, you never want to have a negative cash balance. You have a negative cash balance, your company's going under the water. So here we closely monitor our totals year to year of um, negative cash balances, I mean, of our cash balances. Um, for our first year, I actually, we had a lot of spending and um, we had a, we didn't have, um, we didn't earn a lot because 
we didn't sell a lot of units. So um, basically, I counteracted that by taking out two loans during that year to keep a positive um, cash balance. Um, are you lose, uh, you, it's important to keep year to year if you're profiting from or you're losing. As you can see here, for the first two years, as we're developing our reputation, that we're actually losing in, in how much we earn. But for the third, fourth, and fifth year, you'll see it actually grow, <laughs> grows really fast. <laughs> um, now I'm talking a little about our option, exit strategy. Okay, talking a little bit about our exit strategies. Um, this basically, we're gonna have two options. By year 2025, this is where our exit strategy is proposed. We're either gonna go public or buy out. Going public will give us ability to, um, we're going to basically sell 48% of our company, keeping 52% of, uh, of it. That way we have still have entitlement to um, control over the manager, manager and um, research and development. And, um, but the only disadvantage to this is um, basically you're going to open your books for the public to um, see your numbers. And that can be very bad when you're your competitor, competitors get to see your numbers. Um, the second option is to buy out. Basically, you make your um, company seem, uh, you make, um, and our potential buyers would be LinkQuest, and you've put, posed such a threat that they're willing to buy you out for a higher price. Um, basically, um, this w the advantages to this is that you might be able to get an over uh, ending price of your company. But the disadvantage is, um, well, you have no longer have control of your company, and also you will. I forgot. You never. You won't no longer have control of your company. Um, I like to thank Dr. Dewan for running the class, and all the presenter in the class. We learned a lot in terms of the business aspects and how to actually run a, tr a entrepreneurial business. <laughs>